Hi there, it's Ray Estrella, Family First Real Estate in Richmond and British Columbia and other areas of the greater Vancouver area. Um, I'm actually broadcasting this from my car because I am stuck in traffic. So uh, I just wanted to uh, talk about uh, the latest situation I had uh, with the sale that I'm actually heading over to right now, which is a townhouse complex. Uh, we had listed over in uh, Surrey Meadows, the townhouse complex over there. And we just removed subjects uh, with the buyers uh, the other day. Now this kind of came into a different uh, situation that I wanted to be talking about because this is kind of describing what's happening in the Vancouver area uh, when it comes to condos and townhouses. And it's very, very crazy where a lot of things are actually going into the multiple offer situation. And the one thing that I've actually noticed is that there's a lot of um, offers after a multiple offer situation, after these open houses that just seem to be collapsing for whatever reason. Now, whether it could be the mortgage, uh, whether it could be a building inspection or they just plainly got cold feet or changed their mind. And we've been seeing a lot of that. Uh, and this is kind of something that I want to be touching with because um, as a realtor, I want to be able to try to find ways to actually avoid these kind of situations, um, especially whether, whether it is my buyer or whether it is my seller. So the situation was that uh, we had the property on for a few days uh, and uh, we decided, uh, we actually got an offer uh, within the first couple of days of um, the listing. And the realtor that was dealing with us was saying, it's like, my clients are serious. They want to uh, deal with us right away. We can cancel the open house. We can cancel all your appointments. And my client decided, you know what? We, let's wait till after the open house and um, maybe we can actually generate a couple of more offers. And we did the open house, a uh, very good open house, and yes, we actually generated about two more offers. Now, after the open house, uh, what happened was that the people that actually uh, wrote that first offer, which was a very high offer, decided that they wanted to change their mind and not proceed. Now, what would have happened if the, we actually dealt with that before the open houses, canceled all the other appointments, right? We probably wouldn't have had the other two offers there in the first place. And this is kind of a situation that we see now uh, a lot in the greater Vancouver area where the market is so, um, it's so crazy to a point where people are gonna be writing offers, but yet when they think about it, it's like, you know what, maybe I wrote an offer that's way too high. Um, so, you know what, this, uh, this kind of uh, thing can be very very relevant whether you are a buyer or a seller right and when in the situation that I had with the seller um, I still needed to screen the two other offers that we actually received you know to make sure that we're actually very very good to go that they're pre-qualified and you know what if you're actually working with an agent that you have to make sure that these kind of questions are asked uh, the one thing that I um, I try to deal with as a realtor on the selling side is to make sure that the sellers know that the offer doesn't end on page one. And what that means is on page one of the contract, that's where we see the price, right? As as attractive as the price might be, we see the rest of the uh, details of the contract as well as some other details about the client who's buying on page two and page three and even page four of the contract, right? To actually be able to see how much uh, the client is putting down to see if they're actually pre-qualified um, and those are the kind of things that I definitely want to be wondering uh, if I actually even want to be dealing with the offer. And sometimes if it's not the highest offer, right, maybe I'll find strength in the buyers on the second or third one, right? So usually those are the kind of things that I wanted to be making sure. Uh, and even asking the courteous question is, is this the kind of, com uh, is this the kind of property that your buyer is very, um, is very interested in purchasing? right um, you know on the buyer side the one thing is that I have to say is you know put your best foot forward but make sure you get the advice that's proper to know you know what the market value of these kind of properties are now a lot of these times uh, these a lot of these properties are actually going above the listing price uh, but you know what that's really really up to you if you actually want to be competing at that high, kind of a high level because the fact of the matter is, if you are not gonna be happy with the price that you're actually purchasing for the property, uh, you will be getting buyer's remorse as well. And looking for a way to actually not complete the purchase, um, which is uh, 
which is not a situation that you want to be going uh, to canceling the contract that you're currently in. Um, as, a, as a contract that you do have an obligation to actually fulfill your terms uh, and conditions of the contract. But at the same time, uh, you are also looking for the best value and making sure that you don't overpay uh, for any kind of property that you, uh, that you see. So as a buyer, um, you know what? It's always best to take a look at the comparables, see how much they're going for, whether it's above listing price or not, right? And getting, uh, getting comfortable. Uh, when it comes to writing an offer for the property. And of course, as a selling agent, just making sure that when you talk to people and um, they are uh, they are all making offers on your property, right? You wanna make sure that you find the strongest client, right? Not necessarily the best price. You can always negotiate the price, uh, but definitely can't negotiate um, the, uh, the qualifications uh, of the buyers. And that's always the best thing to do.